Hey guys and welcome back to a quick Jetpack Compose tutorial in which I will show you how you can implement these handy list items here. And before you think, oh, I already know how I make such simple list items, these types of list items actually come from a built-in composable that I didn't know of. Maybe you're now like, oh, Philip, how could you not know this composable? It's so popular. Well, I don't know it and I spent a lot of time dealing with new changes on Android and I just didn't know there was a predefined composable in Material 3 that lets us easily implement such list items. Because I always went ahead and created my own ones, so if I was to create such a list item, I was uh, having a row, I was having an icon in there, a column, a checkbox, then having to define these text styles here so that it looks Material 3-like. But no, we have a very easy way to create these. So let's simply go in our main activity here, completely blank Android Studio project, and let's replicate this little list that we have on the left here. But we first of all want to have an enum class that um, has an entry for every single type of uh, fruit. So you can see we have a lot of fruits here and each fruit has a category. Um, so we can see berries, tropical, citrus, berries again, and so on. And for each type, we now want to have an entry in our enum class. Let's call it fruit category. Oh, we do have our berries. We have our tropical, citrus. We have our droopies and melon. And then we can bundle all that data here in a data class. So data class fruit, and this can can of course be something completely different depending on your list. We want to give it a color. So we have it uh, like on the left side with these uh, colorful icons um, like this. We want to give it a name. We want to give it a description. Of course, a category which we just created. And lastly, we want to have an is selected Boolean so we can toggle our checkbox here when we uh, click these icons, uh, these list items. Furthermore, I will simply uh, paste my sample list of predefined fruits. Um, if you want to use the same list, you can just uh, copy paste that from down below from my GitHub repository, of course. And for some reason, it does complain here, um, probably some kind of issue. Um, yes, because I made this is selected Boolean, um, a default parameter with a default value of false. So we have a bunch of fruits now. Now it becomes fruity and down below we can now implement our simple lazy column with all of our list items. So we have a lazy column, we give the modifier of modifier fill max size. We can also set the content padding to our inner padding. And then in here, we're just going to have a list of items here that takes in a list of T. We will assign our uh, sample fruits actually. And we then get access to our fruit here. And the magic composable that I recently found out is this item, <laughs> surprise, surprise, which already comes with a lot of composable lambdas, which are mostly optional, that let us define all these different texts. So we don't have to have any complex way of uh, nesting rows and columns to create these list items, at least if it's all about simple items. And also if you like this Material 3-like look. So let's make use of this and see which of these lambdas actually uh, stands for what. First of all, the headline content here we can simply pass in a text, which will be the name of our fruit. So the headline um, will be here, obviously, this pineapple, strawberry, and so on. And the cool thing is now that we don't need to worry about the text styles or so if we want to make it look Material 3-like, and because the composable will do the rest for us. We can then set some supporting content. So this will be the description below the headline. We can simply say fruit.description. We can set an overline content, which is also optional. So this is this category, uh, which is also written in all caps, so text, fruit, um, this will be the category.name. We might want to have a leading content, so you can pass some kind of icon, we could pass a real image, anything that is just um, on the left side before your list items, you can come really creative with that. So we can just have an icon here, pass in some image vector, like icons.default, and I don't know what kind of icon you like here. Um, I use the shopping cart, I think. Um, let me look for that shopping cart. There we go. Let's set the content description to null for this demonstrational example. And we want to set the tint to the color of our fruit. So fruit.color. And then lastly, what we can do is we can define the trailing content. So what comes at the right side of our um, simple list item. Oops, I accidentally closed it. But this will really just be a checkbox where the check value is equal to fruit that is selected. And when this changes, we can then simply update our list of fruits. Um, so we might actually keep track of these here in a simple state. So fruits by remember, and the initial state is a mutable state of our sample fruit list. Alt enter to import this, Alt enter again, and we can take this state 
and assign it here. And when we then toggle our checkbox, we simply loop through our fruits list. So we say fruits is equal to fruits.map. And if the fruit, or let's call it current fruit, if the current fruit is actually equal to the current fruit we're um, we're showing here in the in our list, then we say, okay, that's current fruit that copy, and we simply toggle the selected boolean like this. And otherwise, we just don't do anything. Um, oops. Otherwise, we don't do anything, and we just map it to the existing fruit. We really just loop over a list of fruits. We find the fruit that we currently toggle the uh, selected for, and then we toggle it for that fruit and otherwise we leave all other fruits unchained. And I would also like to actually add a modifier so that we, if we click the whole item, we also toggle the checkbox. So we can give it a modifier of modifier fill max width, which I think is already the default. And when we then click our fruit, we can actually do the same thing here. Um, so we could of course extract that into Lambda or Function or so to uh, reuse this, but it's really just uh, a demonstrational example. And if we now launch this, I think this should already be everything. Yes, there we go. This is looking exactly as before. Uh, well, I think before I added the, a divider here, um, which is very easy to do, by just going here after our list item, adding this horizontal divider, and boom, there it is. We have the exact same list. Uh, we can toggle single items here. A little bit laggy, which I think is because um, it's a debug mode. We could also give these items a key here if you would want to um, prove the performance a little bit. So we have our items and then also have a key that we specify, which is just unique per fruit. We just assign the name since every single fruit's name um, exists just once in the list. So if we relaunch this, um, then thanks to these keys, changing one item uh, will not recompose the whole list, but rather just the uh, single list item. So, oh yeah, now it's actually a lot more fluent, you can see. So while this is probably not something that most people will say, oh, I, I wouldn't have guessed how to build something or layout like this, I think it's still very useful to know this composable because very often we don't need to reinvent the wheel. And if you need a list item that looks similar to this, then you can just use the predefined composable without having to nest rows and columns with uh, the 10 layers of nesting. I don't know. <laughs> I think you can uh, be really flexible with this type of composable. You don't need to specify all those lambdas. So you can also leave some of them out. So if you don't want this overline content, just leave it and then um, it will adjust and look like this. We don't have to worry about any spacings or paddings. Um, it will just look nice out of the box. Of course, there will be scenarios where you won't be fine with this list item composable, especially if you maybe have a custom design or so, um, then you might be better off uh, having your own type of composable. But I think more often than not, we can actually make use of this list item. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you are actually looking to improve your architecture, your architecture of Android apps, then I have a gift for you. I have a free course where I reveal all my best practices about Android architecture. I will link this down below. You can, you can just register for free and then um, I'll send it to you. So happy learning. Thanks for watching. And I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.